Dana Larson. Hello. Founder of Cannabis Culture Magazine, founder of the Vancouver Seed Bank, founder of the Vancouver Medical Dispensary Society, founder and organizer of Sensible BC. Uh, the list yeah. goes on I'd and say on. Co-founder co a lot of those things. Co-founder. Absolutely. It's good right, stuff. Right. I'll take credit that's right. though. That's all right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Your latest, of course, is the Sensible BC project, and we just published your voter's guide on the front page of Cannabis Culture today. Right on. That's nice good. Nice work good on the stuff. voter's guide. Yeah, yeah. We thought we'd, we'd, we sent out a questionnaire to a lot of can all the candidates, and, you know, I know myself having run as the, for the leadership of the BC NDP, you get a lot of questionnaires from a lot of people. So, understandably, not everybody was able to answer it, but we got answers back from quite a few NDP, quite a few liberals, a lot of greens, surprisingly, a lot of conservatives were on board. And, what our questionnaire ultimately really showed, just like some polling that we did showed, is that everybody in BC supports the criminalization. Greens all support it, vast quantities. NDP, pretty much everybody supports it. Certainly nobody's against it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only ones that were really against it, oddly, was about half the Liberals. It was a weird mix, like the Conservatives. Well, no, there's some, maybe some Conservatives that are against it, but none of them got back to us. We didn't see any Conservative response. All I see when Conservatives get asked about it at all candidates' meetings is that they support decrim or legalization. Mm. Uh, but the Liberals have got some really harsh prohibitionists on their team, uh, as well as uh, some really enlightened people as well. They've got, they're all over the place on it, right? They don't have really have a, any kind of party unity on that issue, whereas I think the NDP and the Greens uh, certainly did, and, uh, and the Conservatives really do as well. It was kind of weird that the Liberals in BC are more conservative or more you know anti-tolerant on this issue than any other any yeah. other group although they got some good folks on board yeah. sam sullivan is very progressive a former yeah. mayor of vancouver he's running for the liberals he actually said he was going to make marijuana a priority if he got elected yeah uh but then you've got people like rich coleman who's uh, been in the end i mean in the liberals for i think three elections now and uh he's still calling marijuana a gateway drug and pledging to crack down and everything yeah. although not surprisingly or perhaps not coincidentally he also like is very pro alcohol gets a lot of money from the alcohol lobby not and has this kind of scandalously taken alcohol money and then gone and changed the regulations shortly afterwards to allow to allow those groups to make more profit and right. uh, there's also so, Daryl Plekis for yeah the Plekis also is very bad and of course uh, we've got a marijuana candidate Steve Finley one of the two BC marijuana party candidates He's targeting Plekis. There's some great video online of Plekis looking very uncomfortable, as Finley calls him on his uh, very ignorant stance. Plekis is a criminologist who basically works for the RCMP as their kind of go-to guy when they want someone to uh, say bad things about marijuana and spread. He says stuff like, marijuana is stupid and it's smoking it makes you stupider and like stuff like yeah. that. It's really not based in any kind of, yeah, based on any kind stuff. of scientific thing or anything. No, so, no he's, he's, he's terrible. That's what but, my dad uh, used to say. Yeah, Abbotsford. And so Steve, the BC Marijuana Party candidate is running against him and there's even been uh, articles published in the Georgia Strait, you know, pointing out the fact that the BC Marijuana Party is targeting Plekis and stuff. That's good. Which That's good. I guess is kind of true. We did sort of, the reason that Steve wanted to run for the BC Marijuana Party was, it was just a great uh, reason to get at Plekis there in that riding because we knew he was going to be talking his bullshit. So, um, yeah, Dana, the election's coming up and you, you actually ran as a leadership candidate for the NDP um, not too long ago. And we have Adrian Dix, who's probably going to be the leader of the province. I sure hope so. Yeah. And how is the front there? Has Adrian, I, I know it's hard to sort of crack these big party guys into saying anything or doing anything, but is there any murmurs from the party that they would support something like Sensible BC or how is Well, that? absolutely. I mean, I mean, okay, we made a lot of progress, first of all, let's say, like the NDP <coughs> in that most recent debate and during this election cycle, it's the first time we've had the leader of a major political party, someone who's likely to become premier in BC say, I fully support decriminalization of marijuana. I'm not aware of any other premiers in BC that have made statements like that, to my knowledge anyways. They don't normally talk about the issue. We made it, it was only three or four questions were taken from the public during the televised debate, and marijuana was one of those. Mm -hmm. They have to have received a lot of questions about marijuana for that to be an issue. We've made marijuana an issue in this election debate. And Adrian Dix has given at least partly the right answer, right? When he got asked about decriminalization, he unequivocally said, yes, I support decriminalization. 
He also said that Harper is tough on crime and mandatory minimums were going to cause us problems here in BC and that as Premier he would bring those issues up with Harper and that's good because it's not just provincial, it's not just federal jurisdiction, it's not just provincial, it's kind of a mix of both and they got to talk about it. Yeah. And it's very appropriate for our Premier to say we don't want to keep spending the money and putting our people in jail for these minor marijuana offenses. Right. However, he also made it clear that he's not willing to go further and that he, at this point anyways he's not going to pass a sensible policing act without being pushed into it by the people of BC. Mm. So, however, it's better him saying decriminalization than Christy Clark who said, who ridiculed him for it and wouldn't answer the question. Mm. Having a premier who says, I support decriminalization, but it's a federal issue, we can work with that. Mm -hmm. And many folks in his caucus have gone further, you know. Uh, uh, Nicholas Simons has been very supportive, uh, spoke at our Sensible BC events. He's a candidate for a power over Sunshine Coast and has been MLA there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, other NDP candidates, Terry Platt, who's running in uh, West Vancouver, wrote, wrote back to me said she agrees her policy on marijuana is the same as the marijuana party she said right uh, and uh, and other candidates have also expressed stronger support uh, uh, Robin Austin up in, in uh, Skeena which he's also in, in Terrace where uh, uh, the marijuana millionaire Bob Herb lives yeah uh, Robin Austin actually went to the 420 rally there and he spoke and he said that I hope that they succeed that sensible succeeds that sensible BC succeeds and getting the signatures they need because it's an important issue that we should have a referendum on. And so we've got support in the caucus. If NDP forms government, they will not fight against Sensible BC. They won't try to stop it. Some of the MLAs will probably speak for it and continue to say they support it and maybe sign up and vote for it. Yeah. But to get them to actually pass it without a referendum is possible, but it'll be a lot of hard work. Yeah. And part of so it's kind of a dual pronged approach. You know, I'd love it if we could avoid a referendum. <laughs> And just have them pass it. That will be easier, it's better. It's just such a waste a lot of, of money. money in the end. Yeah, that's but, the thing. But the referendum is kind of the way we're because you can't. No one can argue with the referendum. If you win yeah. a referendum, then that's it. I it mean, it might be better to actually can. have it because then it's going to be sealed. The deal will be sealed. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's true. So we're working towards both, but we certainly want to build political support. And we're going to be doing the signature gathering campaign this September, October, November. The goal is to succeed. I th think it's certainly possible to succeed. Even if we don't get all the signatures we need, it's still possible to get this law passed. So we've got lots of avenues and ways of pushing this forward. But our campaign has really been going really well. You know, we've still got a lot of climbing up that big hill to do. We still need a lot of volunteers. If the clock was started today, we would not be ready. We would not get anywhere near close to what we get. Although. Yeah. We're building up momentum all the time. Our Facebook page has got close to 25,000 fans on it now. Yeah. We've uh, got thousands of people in our database, like over you know 20,000 people who've signed up to our database. Uh, we've actually got a couple thousand volunteers, uh, and we've, we've just finished a massive phone calling campaign doing a, a robocalling or auto dialing, which I guess has gotten a bad name when it's misused, but right. it's only really a bad <laughs> thing when you're telling people to go to the wrong polling station or lying to them about some kind of misleading thing, but we're not right. doing that, of course. Our thing, if you pick up the phone, uh, 1.4 million landlines in BC, and I was surprised as anybody else to think that there's still 1.4 million people who have a home phone that plugs into the wall. I didn't know wow. that was that common, but certainly there's a lot of those out there. So we've called all 1.4 million people and when they pick up the phone, they hear, marijuana decriminalization is an important issue in British Columbia. I'm Nicole, calling from sensiblebc.ca. Oh, uh, Nicole did it. Nicole, she did, yeah. Nice. If you would support decriminalization of marijuana, please press one. If you're against it, press two. If you're not sure what decriminalization means, push three. And then of those, we if they say they support it, we ask them, would you volunteer or donate? And they push one again, we're gonna, and then we got a couple thousand people like that who have said they want to volunteer and donate. Our task now is to contact all those people with an actual personal follow-up call and get them on board to actually uh, uh, volunteer and donate and get involved in the campaign because we will not succeed without thousands of volunteers. Doc Cron, because he hasn't been called yet. Yeah. Well, you know, Doesn't if you have, have a landline in BC, you should get it. If you're not home or not available at that moment, then you'll miss the call. We are going to call doesn't all the numbers message. that it doesn't. Well, sometimes it does, but it's not supposed to. But if you aren't there, we're going to call all the numbers that didn't answer again. And we do it three times, each time calling all the numbers that didn't answer. So ah. if you don't answer your phone all three times, you won't get it. But if you just miss one, we'll get you on the second time. Nice. But because it's a, it's got to be a call in thing. I want to so. hear the recording. Or actually, we should just have Nicole on the show to read us what to she... To read it out there, yeah. yeah that but, would be really awesome. But we made sure that the first word they hear is marijuana, marijuana. because yeah. people get annoyed by those kind of calls. And there's certainly a very high hang-up rate. And so if you're interested in marijuana and you hear marijuana, you're more likely, I think, to stay on the phone and hear the rest of the message. Yeah. Whereas if you just hear a bunch of introductory stuff. So, Very so we've been doing that. Uh, we, we've, uh, we're also looking at potentially doing a mask 
kind of text messaging thing to reach out to cell phones. It's harder. There's no central directory of cell phones with landlines. Yeah. We know the address. So, but anyways, the point is not the details. The point is that we're running a serious campaign. We were contacting people all around the province. We're building a lot of support and awareness. We've been in over 100 newspaper articles since we launched the campaign. We've been endorsed all by... All positive, really. All positive. No, not a single person is really against the campaign. I mean, in the early days, I had a debate with a former RCMP officer, but really... So our polling shows a majority of conservatives support it. Our polling showed 73% support in BC, and those are the four. And then I think it was like 14 and 15% against uh, the idea that we should that that police should make marijuana possession the lowest priority and stop busting people. Yeah. And then slightly lower support, 70% support for the idea that BC should call upon the federal government to repeal marijuana prohibition so that BC can regulate it like alcohol and tobacco. If you go to sensiblebc.ca, I just uploaded a few new articles with some great graphics that we had put together, uh, showing with some wonderful pie charts, the different levels of support in all the different parties. But there are not many issues that have majority support in, every, in the Conservatives, the Liberals, the NDP, the Greens, and the undecided voters in BC. Uh, I can't think of anything else, especially any other issue that they don't want to act on. Like they're, yeah. not, they're not willing they're to still act not on it, even though on they it. support it. But yeah, but our so legislation, and it's a common conversation yeah. I have with people that our law shows that BC can decriminalize marijuana, and it's not even uncommon. You know, the provinces do this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah, and uh, I always bring up the long gun registry example that how BC decriminalized possession of an unregistered long gun in 2003. That's right. Telling the cops to laugh, but you know we HST. actually. We actually also decriminalized. We actually decriminalized drunk driving in, in BC. Did you know that? Like, oh, I we, see. we bypassed the federal law. In that case, they didn't decriminalize it by removing the penalties. They created an alternate set of non-criminal regulatory penalties. Right. They said charging people for drunk driving is costing us too much money. It's too much hassle for the police. Takes too much time. Instead, we're just going to take away your driver's license, and we're going to make you do this course. And we're telling the police, don't charge people under the criminal code. Give them, take away their driver's license, use this regulatory scheme in the province. So there's, the, the idea that, we, that the province is helpless to federal law is yeah. ridiculous. We do this all the time. Yeah, so the, we, when we the tell attorney our police, general says, Don't enforce that federal law, we're going to replace it with this, or we're just going to replace it with nothing. We just want you to prioritize other stuff. Yeah. Like in the case of drunk driving, they decriminalized it by changing it and making it a regulatory scheme. Yeah. And they could do that. If they wanted to make a, a ticket for possession, they could do that in BC in the same way. Now, I don't think a ticketing scheme is the right way to go, no. but they could do that if they wanted. They could say, we're going to make it a $1 fine for marijuana possession, and we are urging police $1. to, we're telling the police to use that thing instead of charging them criminally. Yeah. It's exactly the same as the drunk driving thing. It's just a different way of looking yeah. at it. I'm making it a five dollar fine. Make it and something where the penalty exists, but it's really not. That's Christy you know. Clark and the Liberals' favorite thing to say. So the Attorney General yeah, Shirley Bond says it's a federal issue. There's nothing yeah. we can do about it. I mean, it, it is There's also a federal issue. We can't sell marijuana in marijuana shops without a change to federal law. Right. But we can certainly decriminalize possession. We can certainly take control provincially. We can prioritize police resources. We can call upon the federal government to change the law and start figuring out what we're going to do when they say yes. Start the discussion about what is legal marijuana going to look like in BC. So that I want to be ready to go. So when the federal government repeals marijuana prohibition, we have a plan in place. We've already had that discussion. Rather than saying, okay, now we're going to spend two years thinking about it and figuring it out, let's do that now. We know it's coming. Washington has legalized marijuana. Colorado's legalized marijuana. They're already having this conversation and trying to figure out how they're going to sell it. We can learn a lot from looking at them, seeing what goes down there, looking at other countries around the world, like Holland and Portugal, that have tried different models to decriminalize or allow marijuana and like yep. figure out what will work for us here in BC. Yep. And uh, I was going to say, I can't remember what I was going to say. Now I lost my train of thought. But yeah, I really think that approaching it this way, oh, I know what I was going to say. You mentioned um, not being able to actually have storefronts where we sell marijuana. Now we do have the medical marijuana system that's here now uh, where it, you know, it is illegal. But there's also this idea of Evan Woods. A beautiful idea, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And this is, this is something along the same <coughs> lines as the Insight safe injection heroin sites. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yeah, what sure. And, and that dovetails, like our, our campaign and Evan Wood Stop the Violence BC campaign really are, to me, two sides of the same coin, right? Their effort has been to get prominent citizens, politicians, police officers, health officials, sort of a top down, like getting those prominent folks, building a political consensus, former mayors, current mayors. Our campaign is from the grassroots. We're looking, we certainly want 
you know, plus in endorsements from prominent individuals, and Evan Wood wants grassroots support, but our campaign is about getting regular folks involved, making change from the people, having a referendum campaign. But what they've been calling for recently is to have a trial of a legal marijuana outlet. Like call it a dispensary, but not a dispensary just for medical patients, a dispensary for anybody. Yeah. But have it be a study. So that like insight, they're gathering data, they do research, they ask questions, they look at who's buying marijuana, how it's being used, what the effects are in the community, what the effects are on the users, what the effects are, and see how it all goes down. But to do that we still need to change, if not to federal law, at least the federal government's got to say yes. BC, unless they just want to go rogue and do it by themselves, which we're kind of doing in BC, in Vancouver with these dispensaries anyways, but for well, the province and, uh, to do some kind of official kind of thing. in that sort of way. Itself, it did, you know? but it, it did have, I mean, it started off, but the province wasn't endorsing it when it was an underground place. It was the, the Vendu did their own thing. The city of Vancouver kind of fought against it, then kind of helped it. Then, they, then the province and the federal government, the liberals gave it permission to finally open. Then when the conservatives tried to take, take that permission away, BC went to court and fought it, and we won just in that narrow instance, we won the right to keep it open. Yeah. Um, and so, but our legislation also says we want to decriminalize marijuana possession and then call upon the federal government to repeal marijuana prohibition or and or to give BC an exemption under section 56. Right. So certainly a good way to start would be to stop busting marijuana users and then to open up this dispensary or series of dispensaries for all people to come to. I don't really like the word dispensary because it's, it's a medical term and so I'd rather call them, you know, legal marijuana outlets in some way that would either sell to everybody or maybe just sell to certain people that are part of the study, have a few hundred British Columbians that are registered to allow to purchase and sort of see how it works or something like that. But some kind of a study along those lines, that would be great. And that's a great, another sensible first step. And you know, the ND, I'm an NDP, or the NDP uh, 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 slogan this election is, is practical change one, well, st or positive change one practical step at a time. I think I got that right. They have a few. And, uh, well, but the one practical step at a time idea is what I like about our campaign. That's what we're trying to do. Our goal is a fully legally regulated system, but we're not going to get from here to there in one step. We're going to get there in multiple smaller steps. Criminalizing possession is the first step. Calling upon the federal government to repeal marijuana prohibition is a good step. Opening up some kind of study program where we can sell marijuana to adults, that's a good first step. Uh, improving medical marijuana access, those are all positive first steps towards an ultimate goal. And I'd love it if we could just go from here to there in one step, but it's not going to work like that. You know, it takes hopefully not more than a few years, but if we don't take any steps, we're not going to get from here to there, right? So we got to start moving in the right direction. Sensible BC lays out some positive steps that, that we can do as a province. And if you're watching this and you're not in BC, I mean, any province could pass this kind of law. Nothing is unique to it of BC in the Sensible Policing Act. With very minor changes, our same legislation would apply to any province. You know, you wouldn't need to change very much. The only thing that's unique in BC is our referendum system and that we have the power in BC to, to put something on the ballot and force it through regardless of what our political leaders say. And that's how every single referendum has been passed in the U.S., right? I mean, if, our, if, the, if the governor supported it, you wouldn't have to have a referendum, right? But in Washington and Colorado, the state governments were against it. In the 18 states that have legalized medical marijuana, the state governments were all against it pretty much. Yeah. Um, and so it's the same kind of thing here. You know, we have support, but just not, they're not willing to take action, but they're not going to try to stop it either, right? But and not all provinces allow for a ballot initiative process. But none of them really of do. Ones. Yeah, well, Saskatchewan kind of has one. I only yeah. learned about it recently. Uh, I don't know the details about it too much, but they do have one in Saskatchewan. I don't know of anybody ever getting anything on the ballot there. Yeah. So, but certainly, and I'm not even sure, it might pass there, but there would be a tighter margin of support in Saskatchewan. Polls do show majority support in Saskatchewan, yeah. but it's a tighter margin, whereas here it's like said two, you know, three quarters support kind of thing, right? Yeah. So hopefully in Saskatchewan, they're getting better with uh, people like Jeff Lundstrom out there. Yeah, it would probably win. It would probably win a referendum there too. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, so actually that's true. I, I've been, I was misleading people because I didn't know that, but I only found out recently. Right, and I thought Saskatchewan. there was one other one as well. I'm not aware of any other ones, oh, okay, but if, if there is, On you the know, that, page, that might I be swear there. There was another one, maybe I was misled. But uh, any yeah. province can call a referendum. The government can just say we're going to have one yeah. and just do it for the fun of doing one. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Or they could just put be... the legislation through. Yeah, and you yeah. Have to have you know, one I mean, again, having a referendum is good to sort of prove public support, but ultimately it's also expensive and yeah. you know, big hassle. And certainly it's a lot of work for us. 
I got other things I'd rather be doing, I guess, and gathering all these signatures, although it will be quite historic when we succeed. Well, and um, how is the campaign going? Are you getting a lot of the signatures you need for the pre-campaigning stuff? Yeah, well, the pre-registration is coming along. You know, even pre-registering people is important. Even more important is getting volunteers in place because we can always get more signatures when the time comes, right? But people are gathering, sending in signatures all the time. We've got a big stack of forms we haven't got done yet. And in fact, if you're watching this and you want to help out, whether or not you live in BC, there's a lot you can do and there's some very simple practical things that you can do. One thing is data entry. We got teams all around the province collecting people's names and info and we get them in on these sheets like these sign up sheets. They come back to our office. We got to get them into our database so that we can contact these people later on. It's just a matter of sitting down, typing stuff up, getting them entered into the database. It's not very hard but it does need doing and we have a lot of hours of that. You can come into our office in Vancouver and work uh, right there and make some new friends. You can also do it from your house as well. We can scan in or fax you sheets to uh, type in and you can work from home if you like but you do need to devote some time and energy to that and another thing that you can do uh, from home which we're not quite ready yet but very soon is making phone calls you know like I said we did this big call out and we identified like I think four or five thousand people that said they want to volunteer across the province for the sensible BC campaign we that's a great pool of volunteers but to get them activated we need volunteers to call our volunteers to get them to volunteer yeah so we need folks to be able to either come into our office and call there. You can also do it from your own home. We've got a script you can work from, you can be trained. As long as you've got an internet connection, which you must have if you're watching the show, mm -hmm. and you've got Skype, you can actually make calls or Google Voice or whatever. So these you are can, like volunteer call. coordinators. These are volunteer jobs that we need people, not even coordinators, just to call other people and say, hey, uh, I'm calling from Sensible BC. I have it down here that you said you want to volunteer for the campaign and you might want to donate. Uh, what do you want to know about the campaign? How can you help out? Here's some things you can do. Do you want to do what I'm doing and call people up? Okay good. Here's the number you can call to get involved. Just so we can reach out to all these people and build our base. You call 10 people, they call 10 people, so on, so on. And it's just one of the ways you can help out. So data entry and calling people, building our database, those are two big things. Also on our website, sensiblebc.ca, we have a lot of banners. You can put up those banners on your webpage if you have one or a blog or something. Oops. You can also, we have a lot of great Facebook memes like square graphics that work really well on Facebook. We have them on our Facebook page, but you can also just post them to your Facebook or yeah. if you're on Google, you know, Google Circles or Google Plus or whatever it's called. And yeah. I don't use that, obviously, but if you're on things like that or other social media, also just talking to people, talking to your friends and family, saying, hey, did you hear about the marijuana referendum campaign? What do you think about that? You don't even have to out yourself. Just ask people what they think about it or what they, what they heard about it or whatever, you know, like put the word out there to people so that awareness is created so that people are understand what's going on yeah, and if you sure. really and if you're highly motivated and you really want to make a difference if marijuana has been really good to you and you want to help out then join our canvassing teams and we're still putting those in place but in Vancouver Victoria Kelowna and several other parts around the province we have crews going out uh, pretty regularly they find a spot they main street they have their little folders they talk to people hand out flyers you, you might be a little self-conscious about doing that but actually you get a lot of support a lot of folks will come up and thank you for being there tell you how much it means to them what you're doing they'll be happy about it some folks might give you a hard time too, but you can ignore them. But I tell you, for the most part, and our polling confirms this, the vast majority of people are thrilled to see you out there, want to oh, help yeah. out. And, uh, and so well, you, and we're not so much going door to door, but we're going to like, you know, events, concerts, shows outside on the street uh, on a nice day and in a little group and talking to people and spreading the word. And so those are just yeah. some of the things you can do. There's a few other things as well, but really, if you go to our website, there's a lot there that explains this how you can This kind of stuff involved. is that really fun anyway. I do this every time there's an election for one of the candidates go out and do campaigning and stuff. And I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. You get out there with a group of people and you're all passionate about the same idea and it's really fun. It's fun to be part of these things. And for people who don't have the time that, and can't n maybe necessarily do some of that stuff, people can also send donations to the campaign, right? We need money, absolutely. It, you know, it, it costs a lot of money to run this campaign just from office rental. We only have a few paid staff and we really don't pay anybody very much and they all put in lots of overtime, but still, we gotta pay staff, we have to we do things like polling, these phone calling campaigns. They cost a lot of money to reach everybody. It's quite effective to reach one and a half million people, but it still costs a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've got touring. I've already been to 50 cities and towns around the province, and this summer we're going to really be hitting the hustings hard, getting out there, talking to lots of people. We've got to buy advertising. We've got a lot of stuff that we have to do. And so it takes a lot of money. But you know, we got Bob Erb, the marijuana millionaire, the guy who won the lottery in Terrace uh, last September. 
He's already donated over $100,000 to our campaign. And more importantly, he's matching all the donations that anybody makes. So every dollar you donate gets doubled and becomes $2. And that is an amazing way to double your money, to double your contribution to the campaign. We're aiming for a million dollars to raise altogether. So far, we're getting close to a quarter million or so with all the money we brought in, including Bob's doubling. Uh, so we're a quarter of the way there. Uh, we can maybe do it with less than a million, but with a million dollars, I feel pretty confident we could change the law here. Yeah, no and uh, it's a lot of work, but it'd be great to be part of history. So money is important, but ultimately your time is more important than your money, but we really need both of those things from people and whatever you can do to help. And you can be an armchair activist, you can write letters. We've got it set up so you can send an email to Adrian Dix and Christy Clark and uh, Jade Sterk and, and John Cummins. And as soon as the election's over, we want you to contact your local MLA, give them a call or an email, write to the local newspaper, in your area, write to provincial newspapers about Sensible BC. There's a lot you can do from your own home, from your own computer, yep. but there's a lot more you can do out in the community ultimately. And so do what you can, but uh, but don't let this happen. Don't let it fail and then be like, oh, sorry, I didn't help out, right? Yeah. Let's make this happen because, you know, these laws have been around for almost 100 years. Uh, we were talking about changing the marijuana laws in the 1970s with the Ladane Commission, with uh, Joe Clark and Pierre yep. Trudeau and Jimmy Carter, all saying it was time to change the marijuana laws. It's been almost two generations since that since the yeah. Ladane Commission. I was trying to figure out how long a generation is today, and it's about 25 years apparently. So it's been closing in on two generations since the Ladane Commission was passed. We've criminalized Crazy. two generations of young Canadians, given out far, far too many criminal records, ruined too many lives, and whatever your feelings about marijuana, I always say marijuana is a family issue, it's not a criminal issue. You know, if you don't want your kids smoking pot, that's for you to deal with with your kids, it's not for the police to deal with. It's a family issue, it should be dealt with that way. And if you're an adult and you choose marijuana instead of alcohol, and to use it responsibly, that's nobody's so issue but your own. It's virtually harmless really. substance, and it shouldn't be illegal. There's no Yeah, and even if it's harmful, it's less harmful than alcohol. I mean, I don't think marijuana is very, it's, it's definitely, and it's got a lot of medicinal and therapeutic benefits as well, right? And Absolutely. all kinds of positive ways can help people. So, so that's what we're looking at anyways. We can make this change happen in BC. That's the important take-home point. We can do this here in British Columbia. We will do it in British Columbia. These things are not going to come from the top down. They're going to come from, from the grassroots up. That's how it changes. It changes from individuals and communities, then it's cities coming on board. You know, before they legalized medical marijuana in California, San Francisco legalized medical marijuana at the, at the city level. They passed their own bylaws to basically make medical marijuana the lowest priority and to ignore it. And we have the same thing here in Vancouver, where Vancouver has a different policy when it comes to marijuana than the rest of BC does. Uh, that we've got a more tolerant view here, the police don't prioritize it, we allow dispensaries, and these things start off at those levels. And in Washington, it was Seattle, the city of Seattle, that first made marijuana the lowest police priority. That's right. And then a while later, the whole state of Washington went that way. So we've got Vancouver pretty much on board with a sensible marijuana policy here, or at least as good as it can be yep. in a city. Now it's time to win over BC just like they went over Washington and Colorado and the 18 states that have legalized medical marijuana. If we do it here in BC, it will spread to other provinces and then it will, the federal government will change after that. And the last thing to go will be these ridiculous UN treaties. Yeah. They're not gonna go first. Those things are gonna go after everyone's been ignoring the marijuana laws right. for many years. Well, it just goes to show you why smaller governments are better governments, in my opinion anyway, because they're easier to change on those grassroots levels. You really only can make serious changes on those levels because the federal governments and the larger governments are so entrenched and so hard to move in any direction that uh, the, the dominoes have to fall individually first. Dana, thanks for coming on. Sensiblebc.ca sensiblebc.ca. Check it out. Even if you're not from British Columbia, a lot of great stuff happening there. Yeah, and all that donating and, and phone calling and entering of data, you can do from anywhere in the world, ultimately. You know, So if you want to help out, you don't have to live in BC to get involved or to donate. We can also take your money from anywhere in the world for our campaign. And, uh, and so you can tell your kids and grandkids that you helped change the marijuana laws, that you made a difference, you got involved. And we also guarantee good karma points. If you believe in reincarnation, we guarantee, guarantee. you'll be reborn oh. as a higher life form oh. in your next life. I wow, guarantee it's quite that. A guarantee. We can also provide indulgences as well, reduce your time in purgatory. Whatever <laughs> wow. your you know, idea mm. is there, we can help with that kind of stuff too. So good karma. <laughs> Of all, I'm glad you're coordinating all the nominations. Yeah, that absolutely. End of yeah, we've with got that. We made powers some, that be. We can't explain too much. But we made some deals, <laughs> make that stuff happen, uh, and so, uh, so absolutely. So get involved in this campaign. We can really make a difference. Dana, thanks a lot for coming on. As all usual, right. yeah, always my awesome.